and we play cards. Why do we shuffle? We shuffle to create a state of uncertainty. A state of randomness. Chaos. But what if we were to shuffle in an orderly way? A systematic way? Could we really take a process that's supposed to create chaos, but instead create order? In this project, we'll explore what it takes to unshuffle a deck of cards. This is Unshuffled. There are several different ways we can shuffle a deck of cards systematically. The process we will be describing involves perfect riffle shuffles. One precondition of a perfect riffle shuffle is that it can only be performed on a deck with an even number of cards. Consider this example with eight cards where the top card is on the left at index zero and the bottom is on the right at index seven. We define a perfect riffle shuffle to be when a deck with an even number of cards is split into two equal halves and combined together. One card is pulled from a pile at a time, alternating piles after each card. However, we do have a choice of which pile to begin the shuffling with, the top or bottom half. If we begin our shuffling with the top half, or in other words, if we shuffle in such a way that the top card remains on top and the bottom card remains on bottom, we call this an out shuffle. Alternatively, if you begin with the bottom pile, the original top card marked as index zero ends up in the second position instead of remaining on top. We call this process an in shuffle. Our phenomenon stems from the fact that if you perform eight perfect out shuffles to a deck of 52 cards, the deck returns to its original order. Alternatively, it requires 52 perfect in shuffles to return a 52 card deck to its original order. You may be wondering, why eight? Why 52? What happens to these numbers if we change the deck size? Can we use this to predict the movement of cards in a deck? All these interesting questions arise from this phenomenon, but to understand them, we must gain a better mathematical understanding of how the cards move throughout a deck when performing an in or an out shuffle. Here, we will manually perform an out shuffle on a deck of 52 cards. Before beginning the shuffle, the cards are in new deck order. Since we are doing an out shuffle, we start with the top card of the top half and alternate between halves. Here is the end result of this perfect out shuffle. In this picture, the original position of the card is labeled in black. In blue, we mark the original position of the cards in the bottom half relative to the bottom half. So for example, the bottom half starts with card number 26, but since it's now the top of the bottom half, in blue it's labeled 0. In green, on the sides, we labeled the new positions of the cards. If you look closely, you'll see that the card's movement behaves slightly different depending on if it originally came from the top half or bottom half. Let's consider the top half first. The card originally in position 0 ended in position 0. The card that began in position 1 ended in position 2. The card that began in position 2 moved to position 4, and 3 goes to 6, and so on. The pattern continues such that a card originally in position n moves to a final position of 2n. Now let's consider the bottom half. For the bottom half of the deck, we can easily describe the new position using the numbers in blue. The top card from the bottom half, labeled 26 in black and 0 in blue, ends in position 1. Card 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 5, 3 goes to 7, and so on. So we can say that a card originally in the bottom half of the deck, in position n, relative to the bottom half, will end up in position 2n plus 1. If we repeat this process using an in shuffle instead of an out shuffle, we find that the cards behave in a similar fashion. Cards originally in a position in the top half of the deck have moved to a position of two times the original position plus one, and cards originally in the bottom half of the deck have moved to a position of two times the original position relative to the bottom half. 
Once we gained a mathematical understanding of how cards move, we were able to create a Java program that could simulate an out or an in shuffle for any deck size. This, this proved to be a very powerful tool to allow us to generate data and examples quickly. We wrote the code in a way that exhaustively found the number of in and out shuffles required to bring a deck back to its original order. Basically, the code performs a shuffle until the deck has returned to its original order, counting the number of shuffles it takes. We use this code to construct the following table. It contains the deck size, the number of out shuffles required, and the number of in shuffles required to bring the deck back to its original order. We began to look for patterns that exist in the table. One thing that we noticed right away was that deck sizes that are powers of 2 followed a predictable pattern. For a deck of size 2 to the n, the number of out shuffles required is equal to 2n. The number of in shuffles required is equal to 2n. For example, for a deck of size 8, or 2 to the 3rd, we see that the number of out shuffles required is equal to 3, and the number of in shuffles required is equal to 6. Another noticeable pattern is that for a deck of size n, the number of in shuffles required is equal to the number of out shuffles required for a deck of size n plus 2. We see that here in a diagonal pattern. Despite these two patterns we discovered, we are still unable to predict the number of out or in shuffles required depending on deck size. So, we set out to find a formula that would generate these values as a function of deck size. We took many different approaches to try to find this function that we were looking for. We were told there might not be a solution, but after many failed attempts, we eventually found something that seems to work. The key was finding an expression that would give us the position of the card depending on the original starting position, the number of shuffles performed, and the deck size. We came up with the following piecewise function that gave the new position of the card just as a function of the original position. Here is an example for an out shuffle for a deck of 52 cards. It follows the behavior of 2n for values of n greater than or equal to 0 and less than 26, and follows the behavior of 2n plus 1 mod 52 for values of n greater than or equal to 26 and less than 52. So for the bottom half, instead of making the position relative to the bottom half, we can correct it by taking the mod 52 of it. This piecewise function accurately describes the movement of the cards after one out shuffle. The problem was that we were trying to come up with a formula that included a variable that would represent the number of shuffles required to bring the deck back to its original order. This was not possible if we left our functions as piecewise. The key was to write one expression instead of two. For an out shuffle, the top half is 2n, and the bottom half is 2n plus 1 mod 52. In order to make this expression the same, we did the following. For the top half, we can change our expression to 2n mod 51. We can do this because n is less than 26, so 2n will never get to or above 51. Now consider the bottom half. It turns out that 2n plus 1 mod 52 has the same remainder as 2n mod 51 for every value of n except for factors of 51, which in this case is just 51. So we can use mod 51 for both the top and the bottom half of our exp expression and our function is no longer piecewise, since no matter where the card is, the next position will just be two times the previous position, mod 51. So the position of a card, n, is given by the following. n is congruent to n naught times 2 to the p mod d minus 1. Where p is the number of out shuffles, n naught is the starting position, and d is the deck size. Since we want the card to return to its original or position, we can set n to be n naught. We have to be careful about dividing both sides of this congruence by n naught because it is possible for n naught to be a factor of d minus 1, and we would not be able to do that in those cases. However, the only way that this equation is true for all n naught is if 2 to the p has a remainder of 1. So this leads us to the following congruence relation. 1 is congruent to 2 to the p mod d minus 1. Solving this equation for p for a given deck size, d, will give the number of out shuffles required to bring a deck back to its original order. We will spare you the derivation, but it's a similar way of thinking for an in shuffle. We get 1 is congruent to 2 to the p mod d plus 1. 
We were able to use Java to confirm that solutions to those equations gave us the same answers as our exhaustive method earlier, and it did for all deck sizes 4 to 100. Note that it did, it did not work for a deck size of 2. So we have strong reasons to believe that these equations are good for finding the correct number of shuffles required to bring a deck of size D back to its original order. These equations can also explain the patterns that we saw earlier in our table. One of our patterns was that for a deck size D equals 2 to the N, it requires N out shuffles to return the deck to its original order. So if we plug this into our out shuffle equation, 1 is congruent to 2 to the P mod D minus 1. Plugging in N for P gives us 1 is congruent to 2 to the N mod D minus 1. However, 2 to the N is our deck size, so we can say that 1 is congruent to D mod D minus 1. And it's easy to see that this expression is true for any value of D. Our other pattern was that for a deck size of 2 to the n, it requires 2 times n in shuffles to return the deck to its original order. If we plug this into our in shuffle equation, 1 is congruent to 2 to the p mod d plus 1, we get 1 is congruent to 2 to the 2n mod d plus 1. This can also be written as 1 is congruent to 2 to the n quantity squared mod d plus 1. Once again, 2 to the n is our deck size, so we can rewrite this equation as 1 is congruent to d squared mod d plus 1. This expression is more difficult to intuitively tell that it works for any value of d. However, we can show that it does work using long division. So if we consider d squared divided by d plus 1, d plus 1 goes into d squared d minus 1 times. d plus 1 times d minus 1 is equal to d squared minus 1. So if we subtract that from d squared, we're left with a remainder of 1. Our other pattern was that for a deck size of n, the number of in shuffles required to bring the deck back to its original order was equal to the number of out shuffles required to bring the deck back to its original order for a deck size of n plus 2. We have written the out and in shuffle equations here. If we plug in the deck sizes into each of our equations, you can see that n plus 1 is going to be equal to n plus 2 minus 1, and this will cause the values of p, the number of shuffles required, to be the same. If we were to continue to work on this project, one thing we would like to do is refine in our justification for our equations and write them as theorems. It seems unnatural to have the mods deck size minus 1 for out shuffles and deck size plus 1 for in shuffles, because it changes what the mod defines the zero position to be. We need a better mathematical justification for why it works this way. Another thing we would like to further inquire about is something that we call the base 2 rule. We did some research into this phenomenon, but it falls just outside the scope of our original phenomenon. But the base 2 rule goes like this. If you have a card on top of the deck, for any deck size, and want the card to get to the end position, then you can write n in base 2, and for every 1, perform an in shuffle, and for every 0, perform an out shuffle. After this process, the card will be in the end position. Another thing we would like to look into is partial returns. When we perform shuffles, are there any individual cards that return to their original position before the whole deck returns to its original order? How would this change with deck size? Another interesting set of questions comes from the nature of our number of in and out shuffle equations. Is there a way to find what values of deck size will give us the largest number of shuffles required to bring the deck back to its original order? Are there any deck sizes that will never return to their original order? Also. Are there any other patterns that exist from these two equations? We found a pattern with deck sizes that are powers of 2 and the plus 2 pattern. Are there any others like this that exist? To summarize, we started our inquiry process by describing our original phenomenon, that a deck of 52 cards requires 8 out shuffles or 52 in shuffles to return to its original order. We then used Java to generate several examples with different deck sizes. By looking at this table, we were able to find patterns such as the powers of 2 and the plus 2 rule. We then sought after equations that could fully explain our table. We came up with formulas that gave the correct number of shuffles required to bring a deck back to its original order, and we used Java to test that they worked for all of our deck sizes, and they did. We also used these formulas to explain patterns that we observed before. One thing that we could still work on is refining these conjectures into justified theorems. We recognize that we don't have a complete justification for each of the steps that we took to develop our formulas. The final step in our process was making this video and sharing our results with you. This step was important in our inquiry process because it made us reflect on everything that we had researched and organize it into a way that could be easily communicated.
Thank you for watching, and we hope you learned something about what it takes to unshuffle a deck of cards.